Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you my new hierarchical state machine system. This talk is going to be a bit technical. I hope this is useful for other people wanting to do something similar. But I think it's very important to explain how the system works and why it was necessary to implement it the way I did. Normally, simple state machines work in most cases. However when the system grows the complexity increases, that is why it is necessary to implement a hierarchical system that helps us alleviate this complexity by reducing the number of transitions between states. I will give an example of how a hierarchical system benefits this project. Let's imagine that this system controls Mario. We have a series of states connected to each other by transitions. Which are conditions or events that triggers a change to a different state. In this example we can go from the idle state to the running state and so on. But what would happen if each of these states needed to transition to a state in which Mario receives damage? If we count that Mario has more than 100 moves, and that many of them need to make that transition. You can clearly see how this becomes hard to manage and it would complicate things from a programmer's perspective. Doing the operation of setting transitions from every state that needs it is very tedious. But by using hierarchies, only one transition is needed in the parent state that affects all the child states. The transitions are evaluated from parent to child. This way at any moment that the player receives damage, the parent transition will trigger. Exiting at any active child state. This way, we save a lot of work by avoiding setting all those individual transitions to the same state. Now I will show my implementation of the system in Armory Engine using the hacks language. The system has three main classes. The FSM class is responsible of controlling the flow of execution of the states. This portion of code evaluates all the transitions of the active state, including all its parent transitions. If one of those transitions validates as true, a set state function is called to change the current state to a state previously defined by the transition. The getParents function recursively looks for all the parents of the recently active state and stores them in a list. There are some functions responsible for adding parent and child states as well as binding transitions to specific states. The state class is where the game logic is executed. Each instance of this class, contains one list with all the transitions assigned to that instance. And another list with the names of the destination states of those corresponding transitions. The transition class is needed to handle the events or conditions that makes possible the change of one state to another state. In the constructor of this class, we pass a function that contains that logic which it's stored in a variable for a future request. I have created three state instances. Run, idle and hit. These instances override the functions from the parent class, which are currently empty. Now let's set up the state machine in the main file. First, I'm initializing the FSM, and passing as an argument an instance of Mario's trait, so the system can have access to attributes and functions. Next, I'm adding the parent and child states, by passing the name of those class instances, which internally are created dynamically by the system. Here I set the initial state. Now I'm calling a special function useful to draw text on screen, so I can keep track of the state changes. It's time to create some transitions. If I press the R key on the keyboard, the function will return as true, and the transition will trigger, to change to the run state. Otherwise returns false and nothing will happen. The same applies for the other transitions. Pressing I will switch to idle state. And by pressing H, it will trigger a transition to the hit state, which is the parent state. Next, I'm calling a bind function, here I pass the transitions we created, and set it to the corresponding states with its destination. Finally, let's run the FSM every frame. It is very important to have the state instances added to the traits list, so the compiler knows about them. Let's see if the project compiles without crashing. The compile process was successful. At the top left corner of the window we can see the current state, which was previously set as idle. 
Let's play some animations when entering each state. Now we can see that every time a state change happens, the requested animation plays. And we can go to the hit state from both idle and run. But there is no way to get out from hit for now. Let's add that transition. The nice part is that we can recycle transitions. In this case I will set it to use the transition to idle, so it goes from hit to the idle state. As you can see, it works as expected. Well, that's all I wanted to share with all of you. In the next video I will show more progress on Mario's movement. And I hope it will be a good one. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.